hi and welcome to the Master Investor Show 2019. My name is James Faulkner, I'm the editor of Master Investor Magazine and I'm joined by Nick Brind, manager of the Global Financials Trust. Hi Nick. Morning. Good to have you here. Thank you. Um, financials, uh, yes. banks in particular, they're not everybody's cup of, cup of tea at the moment, are they? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, for obvious reasons, 10 years on from you know, the financial crisis, uh, but in a sense that's the opportunity. So, uh, you know, you have to go back and think of the reasons why banks performed so poorly during the financial crisis. Mm. You know, lack of capital, lack of liquidity, uh, poor underwriting of risk. So you think uh, banks were lending money to people with very high loan to value, mortgages, commercial properties, development loans. Um, and that all contributed to the downturn. And since then, you know, They've had to raise their capital ratios, significant amount of regulation, fines, litigation for, for various reasons. And you've had this negative interest rate environment or low interest rate environment. You know, how do banks make money? They make money from charging you on your mortgage, the margin between what they obviously pay out on their you know, deposit. Yep. And so that's been squeezed. And so it's been a horrendous time. What we're saying is today, that's all in the past. And that's why it's an interesting you know, opportunity. Right. Like and, and all this <coughs> extra regulation that's been coming in, yeah. is that acting as, um, as a new sort of barrier to entry to new um, competitors coming into the market? Uh, yes and no. So you, you're looking at two markets. So you look at the incumbents, the big banks. Um, they've got two to three times more capital than they did 10 years ago. Uh, they're lending sensibly, which right. is key. A lot of the risk that they underwrote, say, in 2006 or seven, has now been pushed off balance sheet. Mm. So leverage loans has been topical in newspapers. That's more help asset managers. Mm. Um, and in that sense, it has actually created a bigger barrier to entry for a lot of new entrants. Um, but then we get onto fintech, which is perhaps right. one area <laughs> which is different. We, we couldn't touch on that. So they're, they're benefiting from it, the big incumbents, but there's also there's an opportunity, but there's also a threat there, which we can obviously yeah. touch on. So FinTech then, obviously that it is a threat for the, the incumbent banks, but I'm guessing a lot of the banks are sort of incorporating that technology into their offering. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, absolutely. So you, know, you think, you know, today versus five or 10 years ago, um, how many times do you go visit a bank branch? Mm. <laughs> you, you know, you don't need to. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all on your you know, phone or your tablet or online at home. And the ability to move money between accounts or pay people, it, it just frees up. So you're seeing banks reduce the number of branches, have smaller branches, and you know, that's, that's, that's reduction cost. You know, the cost to a bank is obviously people coming in, people spending cash. So the more contactless payments, the more money that moves onto cards, yeah. again, it's less cost for the banking sector and therefore, you know, they can offset pressure on their revenues or just improve their returns. Right. And how does the portfolio look at the moment? What sort of, um, yeah. what regions are you sort of overweight in and which regions are you underweight in? Yeah. So um, the Polar Capital Global Financial Trust, it's a global financials fund, uh, it invests globally obviously the name suggests so the majority the biggest portion of our assets is in North America the US so you're looking at uh, just over 40 percent there um, we have exposure to UK and Europe continental northern Europe we have a small exposure to Asia and emerging markets of course the, the US banks have been doing really well in terms of share price performance but the the European banks not so well not so well UK somewhere in between um, yeah um, yeah, very, very different. In a sense, the US was quicker to recover from the, the crisis, they were quicker to recapitalize their banking system, uh, and as a result, the banks have performed better. Um, so you've made actually you know, very, very good, good money out of them. Europe, obviously, then post the financial crisis had the Eurozone crisis. It had problems with you know, bad debts on its balance sheet, so it's taken time to get rid of. And it's also had a much more difficult interest rate environment. So interest rates are all intents purposes zero or negative yeah. and a lot of that's really hard environment for banks to make money so they've suffered UK as you said has been somewhere in the middle so they've recovered slightly more quickly mm. they've got their own let's say idiosyncratic issues <laughs> people worry about uh, what will happen with Brexit uh, PPI mm. 
you know, so you've but seen... that's coming to an end now, isn't it? So... Yeah, so August this year that comes to an end. But I mean, that's cost the banking system 30, 35 billion. Mm. So that's been a huge amount of money that banks haven't been able to obviously pay out to shareholders in yep. dividends or, or use for investment. So that's coming to an end. Obviously, aside of short term worries about Brexit, you know, they're, they're unloved and that's, you know, that's yep. potentially an opportunity. Um, you mentioned interest rates being at zero or zero percent effectively. Yeah. Um, they're starting to rise now in the US, aren't they? What implications does that have for banks' profitability going forward? Yeah, so that's been a great tailwind for banks over the last 80, you know, 80 months, two years. So <clears throat> coming back to that, you know, how does a bank make money? It's that margin between what it's you know, charging on loans, mortgages, and what it pays out for funding. As interest rates go up, then what you find is what their, their margins expand because they raise what they charge on loans quicker than what they increase yeah. to you know, savers. Uh, as a result, that's effectively risk-free money that flows to the bottom line, and bank shares have done well on the back of that. The uh, slight concern in the short term is obviously people worried about where we are in the economic cycle. So the Fed has sort of pronounced that they're a little bit more cautious about the outlook. Maybe interest rates aren't going to go up. Mm. Maybe not this year, maybe once next year, and people think they might actually be cut. So then you have the slight opposite in the short term is, you know, margins might come under a little bit of pressure. So obviously for those reasons, people are being a bit more cautious about the sector in the short term. Okay. Um, and just to finish off then, um, give us, yeah. give us a, a pitch that, for why investors ought to be looking at your trust right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, very simple story. It's an unloved sector. It's fantastically cheap, trading at historically wide multiples, whether you look at price earnings, price to book. It's compounded at over 9% per annum since we launched it five and a half years ago. And that's against significant headwinds. And actually we're saying a lot of those headwinds have gone away. Final point, Warren Buffett, 40% of his investment portfolios in US financials. You know, can't do better than that. There you go. Nick Brin, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.